Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the RLD video tutorial series. Um, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, scene and asset preparation. So after you have initialized the plugin there might be uh, two more steps that you need to perform depending on how your scene is set up. Uh, so one of these steps has to do with converting objects, converting the scene objects to dynamic objects. Yeah. So basically, the because the plugin um, allows you to you know move the objects around, rotate them, and scale them, and so on, uh, you need to make sure that all the objects in the scene are marked as dynamic. Um, so in order to do that, there is a uh, utility actually that allows you to automatically do it without you don't have to do anything manually. So if you go to Tools, Runtime Level Design, and click on uh, ut uh, and Utilities, and click on Dynamic Convert, uh, you get this uh, window. And uh, before we get in any of the fields here, you can see we have uh, a Convert Scene button. Uh, and if we press this button, uh, what will happen is that the plugin will traverse all the objects in the scene, and it will uh, mark them as dynamic. Right, and uh, at the end of the process, you will get this scene objects were successfully converted uh, dialog. Okay, press uh, press OK to exit. Uh, now, of course, I have already done that. I have already done this uh, beforehand. But um, yeah, if you basically uh, look at each, uh, if we were to take each of these objects and look at them, we're, we're going to see that um, this toggle button here, which indicates whether the object is static or dynamic. You can see that it's unchecked, which means that the object is dynamic, right? Um, <clears throat> now let's let's talk about the other controls that we have here. Um, you have this mask field uh, called object types, which allows you to specify what type what types of objects are involved in the conversion process, right? By default, this is set to everything. Now. Um, this might be useful, for example, if you, for example, if you have a bunch of lights or particle systems, and I'm just giving an, an example, uh, and you don't want these, you, you know for sure that you're, you don't want to manipulate these in any way, and you just want those to be static objects. Uh, what you can do is you can uncheck lights and uh, particle system, and in that case, the tool will only convert, you know, meshes, strings, sprites, cameras, and empty objects. Uh, empty uh, empty objects are basically objects that do not belong to any of the other types here, right? So uh, that's uh, what the plugin refers to as empty objects. Uh, okay, now um, regarding hierarchies, for example, if you have a hierarchy, uh, for example, uh, a hierarchy that contains a mesh object, and the light object, right? Like the root contains a mesh object and the mesh object has a child which has a light object. In that particular case, um, the, the tool will still convert the entire hierarchy because the mesh object is checked, the, the mesh object type is checked, right? So if at least one object type is checked here and that object type can be found inside one of the objects in the hierarchy, the entire hier hierarchy will be checked. In this particular case, the plugin will see, okay, the hierarchy has a light object, which is not checked, but it also has a mesh object and the mesh object is checked, so, uh, the mesh type is checked, so uh, it will convert the entire hierarchy. Okay, now since you might be instantiating prefabs at runtime, uh, this utility also allows you to convert prefabs to uh, dynamic objects. Yeah, so uh, you can specify a prefab folder here. Uh, I'm gonna use these uh, multi-story dungeons uh, pack uh, which is uh, lovely, by the way, and uh, you're actually gonna see me using this in pretty much pretty much all uh, tutorial or, or my tutorial videos, um, or at least a uh, big part of them. So um, it's it's made by Mana Station, by the way, and I highly recommend that you go in and check it out. Um, and I have a I have a prefabs folder here, and let's just say that. Uh, if you, if you go to this, if you go inside this folder, there's a bunch of uh, other folders. Let's just say that I, I know I'm going to be uh, using the props prefabs. Uh, and I want to make sure that all the, pro all the prefabs in the props uh, folder are marked as uh, dynamic. So I can just take this folder and just drag and drop it right here. You can also write the folder path manually if you wish, but of course it's much easier to just drag and drop uh, the folder inside this field. And then you can uh, uh, press uh, convert prefabs. And uh, yeah, again, you will see a confirmation uh, message box. After you press OK, uh, there might be a small lag 
until you are actually uh, like a small time um, time frame that you need to, that needs to elapse before you can actually interact with the UI. It probably has to do with uh, the fact that after you modify assets like prefabs, for example, uh, the uh, Unity needs to just you know uh, refresh the asset database or something like that. Um, and then you also have process prefab folders. So uh, what this does is basically it allows you to specify if uh, the plugin will search for prefabs in the subfolders of the folder that you specify here. Yeah. So because this was checked, um, we go inside props. You can see the props folder has alchemy, books, furniture, and so on. Uh, because we have this checked, the, the plugin uh, also uh, converted the prefabs inside these folders. But if this was unchecked, these folders here would be ignored and only the prefabs which are direct children of the props folder, the one that we specified here, uh, those are the only ones that would be that would have been uh, processed. Okay, now um, there is also uh, another thing that uh, you need to do, you need to make sure, um, because without it, uh, the, um, the tool features such as object to object snapping and surface snapping will not work correctly. It has to do with the mesh read write enabled flag. So if you go to, uh, let's say, this meshes folder right here, here we have a bunch of models. Um, and uh, you, if you click on one, of, uh, on one model, you can see you have this read write enabled flag here, right? Now you need to make sure that all the meshes that you're going to be working with have this checked. So this read write enabled has to be checked because uh, some features require access to the mesh vertices and if they don't have access to the, to the mesh vertices, it will not, uh, it, they, they, they will not work. So uh, unfortunately, the, the reason I haven't managed to find a way to build uh, a utility that will automatically do this for you, uh, it seems that the Unity API does not allow me, or, or at least I haven't managed to figure out how to do it. So what you can do you can is you will have to perform this manually if you, if you need to and uh, luckily you can what you can do is you can select uh, multiple mesh objects multiple uh, mesh assets at once and then just uh, modify the read write enabled uh, flag uh, for for all of the, for all of them at the, at the same time yeah and uh, yeah, if you if you follow these steps, then um, everything should be everything should be working uh, perfectly. Okay, thanks. Have a nice day.